So how much practice does it take to become a professional? So if you don't know, in addition to clarinet, I'm also really into video games, and one of my favorite video games is Overwatch. And this video was actually inspired by a video that I saw by a creator by the name of Iostux, who is doing a video on how to become a professional Overwatch player. And as I was listening to the timings of how he recommended practicing in order to becoming a professional, it really made me think that it was quite similar to what it takes to become a a professional musician as well and I was curious what it would be like if a musician practiced like they were to become a professional esports player like for the Overwatch League. There's also a couple of videos by Jane who is an Overwatch League coach or was an Overwatch League coach um, going over these practice ideas and some of the mentality behind practicing so I'll link to all of those videos in the description if you're interested in learning about that and seeing how that's related to Overwatch League in particular, but all of the mental ideas about what to be focusing on when you're practicing and the timing to really be a professional all totally applies to playing the clarinet as well. Some really quick things before we actually get into like the breakdown of the timings of these things that were mentioned as sort of tips and like mental and mindset things that I find are really helpful are number one, to remember to like sleep well, eat well, and exercise. When we're learning to play the clarinet, we have a lot of dexterity in our fingers that we have to worry about. And also with learning anything in general, it takes a lot of brain power and your brain is really working hard. So you wanna make sure that it's well rested, has lots of circulation with exercise and has lots of nutrition as well. The other thing that's really important is that we don't want to be going for these too lofty of goals and comparing ourselves to like the absolute top professionals or even our colleagues. We wanna make sure that we're always comparing ourselves to ourselves and working with the goal of improvement. We don't wanna practice in order to like beat out somebody else in a chair test. We want to practice in order to give the best audition or like chair test performance that we personally can. It's always about improving yourself rather than becoming better than others. And the final sort of mindset thing is to be open, be willing to experiment, be open to criticism, and really be critical of yourself and see where those plans lead. So don't be shy to like try doing your embouchure a little bit different one day or try some weird unconventional fingerings for passages and then take the time to reflect and ask yourself if that worked, if that was better, uh, and if you wanna keep doing it. That experimentation is where a lot of learning happens. You can see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And then once you know what works, then you can practice implementing that consistency consistently. So be really open to experimentation, really try lots of different new things, and then work in whatever works for you into your regular practice. So let's talk about the actual timings of things. Um, most People say that four to six hours is sort of your maximum uh, focus potential and the maximum time you can spend doing something before you get really exhausted and aren't effective doing it anymore for that day. So what that looks like in terms of practicing and working is uh, 40 minutes of review and sort of planning. Um, I'm gonna call this planning. Um, you can work on filling out your ultimate practice guide if you've watched Watch that video and if you're coming from that video welcome um, but do check out that video because there's a whole download and everything and goes really in depth with what you should actually be practicing whereas this is just the timings of things um, but yeah this planning where you fill out your practice guide also sort of reviewing um, and this is where you can listen to some recordings maybe you recorded some of your practice session the previous day start by listening to that and be like ah yes these are the spots that still need work put that into your practice guide, and then you'll be ready to go. Um, with the like Overwatch perspective, this would be watching your games. And then the next part would be 20 minutes of 
doing some warm up in the game. Um, for us, warm ups don't mean like actually physically warming up our body and our muscle movement. Um, for us, warm ups are practicing the fundamentals. So we're going to dedicate more time to that. But this 20 minutes can be really useful for working on reads. So you spend a little bit of time breaking in some reads, maybe doing some read adjustment if that's something that you do, um, making sure that you're playing on the best reads and you have lots of good reads in rotation. Once you've done sort of your planning, your review, and your reads are going well, then we get into the actual like blocks of practicing. So for professionals, people who want to do this full time, the first block is going to be 60 minutes. And then it's going to be, of course, alternated with some breaks similar to the Pomodoro technique that we talked more about in the ultimate practice guide video. So 60 minutes of practice, 10 minutes of a break. And for this first practice session, I would recommend working on the fundamentals. So maybe 20 minutes of long tones, 20 minutes of technique and scales, 20 minutes of articulation, then you take a 10 minute break. Then after that, we have another 60 minute session. And this is where you just practice. Um, this is whatever music you might be working on, solos, audition excerpts, uh, ensemble music, practicing. Um, I like to start this first practice with um, some etudes and solo music, the stuff that I'm playing um, sort of for myself, um, for my own advancement, really clarinet specific things. These are usually the hardest things that take the most concentration, so I like to do those earlier in the day. And then after that, we get a longer break. Um, this is part of the Pomodoro technique as well actually where you alternate short breaks, long breaks, short breaks, long breaks, um, and that sort of gives our brain more time to refresh. This is a great time to eat a meal um, if it's lunchtime or dinner time, whenever you're practicing. And then after that, we go back at it again with another 60 minutes of practice. Um, this time is where I would work on my ensemble music. And now when we add this all up, the total time is five hours, including the breaks, and it's four hours of actually playing. So it works really well in that sort of four to six hour range. And if you wanna be a professional, I would say that you have to do this a minimum of five times a week, um, ideally six or seven times a week of at least this much, but you can also do more if you want to be more thorough and get into it even deeper. And if you're in college, you're probably going to end up doing more. So here's my serious college level professional um, guide would be that four, five hour practice routine, plus some other stuff, depending on if you have rehearsals that day or you don't have rehearsals. So if you don't have any additional rehearsals, then we'll go from that 60 minute last practice session, we'll take another 10 minute break, and then go for one more 60 minute practice session. Um, and in this one, you can do a mixture of like ensemble, solo, etudes, whatever you want. If I was going for this, maybe I would do the first 60 minutes just on etude work, uh, the next 60 minutes just on solo work, and then the last 60 minutes on ensemble. So you'll sort of have to come up with what works best for you. You can also spend this 60 minutes um, studying music and analyzing music, still sort of figuring out the, the theory of things, analyze the phrases, figure out where the cadences are and really come up with your plan for how you want to phrase it and go in depth with the music. So there's a lot of options when you end up doing this much. Um, and I would also include a 30 minutes of review um, and sort of reflection where you think about what went well for that day and start to plan what you want to do for the next day. So you do that whole four hours of practicing, five hours if you include the breaks, and then on days you don't have rehearsal, you include this extra 60 minute practice session, or on days that you do have rehearsal, then you have two to four hours, uh, depending on what your rehearsal schedule looks like, how long your band or multiple ensembles that you may be in 
rehearse for. So this gets you playing for six to eight hours a day, which is really a professional schedule. If you think about professionals in the workforce working a nine to five, they're working for eight hours a day. So if you wanna be a professional, like the people in the New York Philharmonic, the Chicago Symphony, all of those great groups, probably practice something like this. They have usually two to four hours of rehearsal a day for whatever concerts they're working on, and then they probably put in two to four hours of practice on their own. Um, so really, in order to be a professional, and if you really want this professional music life, um, this is the kind of hours that you'll be practicing, and it's very similar to the kind of hours that the professional gamers, professional sports players, uh, professional Olympians, um, anybody who is a professional and an expert in their field put in this kind of time which again just goes to show in order to be a professional it doesn't take some magical talent or anything like that it just takes dedicated time organized practice and really going for it and and spending your life doing it so I hope that was interesting for you and gives you a little bit of a sneak peek into what it looks like to have the practice routine of a professional if you want to know how to fill up those 60 minute blocks of time and actually what you should be practicing, check out my ultimate practice guide video. That will be the most helpful for you in terms of what to do clarinet specifically. If you're interested more in hearing the mindsets of these esports professionals and more information about how this schedule works in that genre, um, then check out the links in the descriptions for that. And that's sort of where I got this um, plan for, but it does follow very similarly the sort of schedule that I was doing when I was in college and doing my master's um, and practicing really quite a bit every single day um, to get to this professional level. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Leave it a like or a comment or subscribe, do all that stuff uh, if you're into that. And I look forward to seeing you in another video.